Hey there! Welcome to Sky Gems Academy podcast. At Sky Gems Academy, our vision is to build a community of new generation leaders with strong core values, high level of self awareness, high self worth, and passionate individuals who will give back to the community and the environment. We are focused on delivering high quality blended online learning of 21st century life skills delivered and taught online, practiced and perfected offline. Our philosophy is to inspire, educate, and nurture. We work towards inspiring and igniting sparks. We listen, we coach, we fine tune and accelerate the mastery of 21st century life skills for various age groups. Our blended learning programs are curated from the early years to above 60 years old, as we believe in providing high quality, lifelong learning for everyone. Sky Gems Academy Podcast Series 1 how COVID-19 transformed the education industry. We will take you inside the minds and behind the scenes of 40 exclusive leaders and educators in the education industry. We've interviewed 40 exclusive educators and leaders in the education industry worldwide, starting with China, where the pandemic initially started. You will hear from the leaders in the education industry sharing candidly their views on the possible changes that will take place in the education industry post-COVID-19. Be sure to tune in to SkyGems Academy Podcast Series 1 to listen and learn from the amazing stories, experiences shared, challenges faced, and techniques used by educators in different cities and countries to adapt and overcome their challenges personally as well as professionally in their respective roles in the education industry during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Let's dive in to SkyGems Academy Podcast Series 1. Introducing to you our host, Alyssa. Hey guys, it's Alyssa. Hope everyone is keeping well. SkyGems Academy Podcast is a passion project that my team and I kicked off in early 2020. As we are all facing the unprecedented events and experiences impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, we find that there is an urgent need to unite the global community of educators and leaders to progress forward together. Our main objective is to create a platform for all global leaders and global communities to come together to document these historic moments for our future generations. SkyGems Academy podcast is a platform for everyone from all around the world to share, listen, learn, communicate, collaborate, and come together to network and help one another to pull through this very challenging period that has impacted the global community. In each episode of Sky Gems Academy podcast series one, how COVID-19 transformed the education industry you will find yourself immersed and engaged in in-depth discussions and thought leadership in various aspects of education, technology, humanity, diversity, disparity, and collaborations in the education space. We are very grateful and sincerely appreciate each and every one of you who has motivated us, encouraged us, contributed in your own very special ways, especially our 40 exclusive guest speakers from all around the world. A big thank you to all and a big shout out to all of you. Sky Gems Academy podcast, 34th speaker is Marcella Rueda. As a child and young adult, Marcella loved practicing different sports such as basketball, horseback riding and squash and participated in different competitions in all those sports. As a hobby, Marcella loved cooking with her father every weekend and this instilled in her a passion for cooking of all sorts of different dishes and flavors. She believes that food connects people, cultures and shows how diverse and rich is our world. Since very young, Marcella became an early childhood educator and has been passionate about how children learn, grow and build their own image of the world with our guidance and support. She has worked in education for more than 35 years 
and still in love with this amazing and never boring career. After following different curriculums and approaches, Marcella fell in love with PYP and for the last 18 years have worked following this program which offers children a fantastic way to construct their learning. As an educational leader for many years, Marcella learns every day from the educators and children around her. Being a leader is more like being a facilitator as teachers and children will do it all. I do think that the current COVID-19 pandemic situation has made us think as human beings, our relationships with the world. It has made us rethink education, relationships, jobs, essential things in life, what's essential and what's not. COVID-19 has proven to us that we as human beings have to stop and think about how we do relate with the world around us. As educators, how do we educate children in difficult situations and empower them not only with academic content, but with different skills to be able to survive, live and learn during these challenging times, said Marcella. Now, I am pleased to present to you Marcella Rueda. Today, we have the honor and pleasure of having Miss Marcella Rueda, all the way from Bogota, Colombia, together with us at Sky Gems podcast episode. Good afternoon to you, Marcella. Welcome to Sky Gems podcast. Thank you so much for your time and have you on the show today. Thank you, Alisa. Good morning to you and good afternoon for the people around here. Uh, I'm Marcela Rueda. I'm from Bogota, Colombia. Uh, I work in Colegio Anglo Colombiano, which is a bilingual international school in Bogota. I'm originally from Colombia and I have lived here all my life. Thank you, Marcela. Thank you so much for making time for us today. And we are also excited to hear from you and to listen to all your experiences and vision and also challenges that you face during this pandemic period. The uh, unprecedented period that we are going through right now with COVID-19 all across the globe, we'd like to hear from you, Marcela. How do you feel about the current COVID-19 pandemic situation? Well, um, I have felt challenged as a person, as an, an educator as well. I do think that this current situation has made us think as human beings, our relationship with the world. As a educators, uh, it has challenged us and caused different obstacles in the way that we have been able to pass and learn from it. It has made us rethink education, relationships, jobs, essential things in life, what's essential, what is not. This has proven us that we as human beings have to stop and think about uh, how do we relate with the world around us. And as educators, how to educate children in difficult situations and give them not only academic content, but different skills to be able to survive, live and learn during these challenging times. Uh, I think that we need to stop and rethink what we're doing right and we're not doing right and try to correct those things that we are not doing right in relationship to the world and to our surroundings as educators as well. Thank you, Marcella. I think that is so um, precise in your views and how you feel. It's really about humanity, right? And also pause and rethink what we need to do for the future benefit and for the future generations. Thank you, Marcella. We are clearly facing a lot of challenges and still facing challenges as we are progressing through different phases of the pandemic. Would you be able to share with us what are some of the challenges that you faced during this period? Okay, I will start first uh, as an educator. I'm a leader in the early years part of a school and teaching young children remotely uh, was not something that we thought was yeah. the ideal situation for young children. I yes. mean, we have learned or we have always promoted hands-on activities that uh, activities were engaging, the children could live and explore. And from one day to the next, we had to teach young children remotely and we had to use 
screens a lot, which we mm. always recommended parents not to. So we had to say to ourselves, like, okay, we need to use the screens. How are we going to make experiences, learning experiences, engaging and meaningful for them? How are we going to teach parents a new role? Because with young children, parents had to come in and become educators in a different way as what they are every day with their children and give them some tools for them to support their children appropriately. How we were going to embrace that change as it evolved and make adjustments across the journey. Uh, how we would maintain quality in education. We were not trained to teach remotely. And if you were trained as a early years teacher, that was something that you never thought was going to be the best way to reach the children. But here we are and we had to do it. And, and I do think that a lot of innovation came, a lot of rethinking about how we were going to be as educators and reinventing ourselves as educators. Uh, how we wanted to commit all parents and embrace change all together. And one of the most important things how will we maintain and promote well-being? Well-being mm. for children, for parents, and for teachers as well. So that th those were the biggest challenges I would think we had to confront. And as a human being, being at home, not going out, and reinventing yourself as a person as well. Those were, I would say, the biggest challenges I had to, yeah. to confront. That is well summarized there and um, I'm very interested to hear all those challenges that you faced, in particular the remote learning environment for the young students of yours. How do you adapt to those challenges to make it better and also more effective in terms of the learnings for the young um, learners? And also how do you overcome those challenges that you faced? I'm sure there's a lot of techniques that you've used and also tried and tested along the way. Can you share that with us? Yes. I mean, Thank you. from day one until the last day, we changed tremendously. During the first phase, I would say, because we had like three phases during those three months of remote education. At the beginning with the young children, we thought, okay, these children will not going to be able to connect directly and pay attention to the teacher. So we started sending in a platform that we had in school, uh, some experiences that children had to develop with their parents. Mm -hmm. But little by little, we had to start thinking differently. And we said these children need the contact with their teachers and with their peers. Uh, but you cannot have 16 or 22, four or five year olds all at the same time in front of a camera trying to access the new learning. So we started having some sessions with them, with their teachers. Mm -hmm. Most children reacted in a very positive way, but not all, not all children wanted to connect. Mm -hmm. So we had to develop individual sessions with those that didn't want to connect to engage them to tell them this is fine it's okay if you don't want to come out in the screen and little by little working with them together we had to train our teachers we need to do lots of training with our teachers because they had to make videos but be making a video is not easy for the young children so we had to train them on how to do them, how to edit them, how to make them meaningful. So we had to do workshops with teachers and celebrate good practices and share those good practices with other teachers. We had to listen to the parents' needs. Not all home situations are the same. A lot of those parents had to work all day long. I, they didn't know how to share the time between their jobs and not losing their jobs because many people had lost their jobs during this time yes. and supporting mm -hmm. their children. So it was a big challenge. So we needed to support parents as well, talk to them, had individual meetings, communications with them, acknowledging the different family and teacher situations because some of our teachers are parents as well, have young children at home as well. So we had to take everything into account as we were teaching and adapt as we were teaching. And we needed to be flexible enough and realistic to see what was working, what was not working, learning from other educators in other schools as well. How are you doing it? What's working? What's not working? And day by day, 
adapting our Anglo home learning. That's the way we call it in our school. Mm -hmm. Adapting Very that, nice. yes, uh, to make it meaningful and feasible for most mm. of our students and parents. That is really nice to hear that the growth mindset the uh, the school has and also the the team has when faced with challenges taking up new skills like video skills and video editing and also learning new ways of teaching and also reaching out and engaging the students. I find that it's really very heartwarming to hear, especially during such challenging period. So really applaud you for all that you have done together with your team to support the community. Thank you, Marcella. Thanks, too. Yeah, thank you. Marcella, during this period where we're going through those challenges that you mentioned and overcoming them, what are the key lessons learned that you could share with us? Okay, we learned that not anything is there forever, that we needed to have, as you said, a growth mindset to embrace what was coming and change. Uh, we had to make necessary changes day by day. We needed to empower key people, like our ICT coach became, for example, a key person in this a whole new way of teaching. She was uh, a key person working together with teachers. We had very young teachers that for them technology was part of their life, but mm -hmm. not everyone in our team. Yeah. Some teachers were afraid of technology, were afraid of doing many things. Uh, we had to empower needle leaders as well to work with their teams uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. We had to break some paradigmas about different things and create new ones. We needed to know that little ones could learn through these media, but we had to decide what were the key elements that we needed to have in each one of these lessons to listen to all stakeholders, but at the end, make decisions that were good for the majority. You have to think of each one and every one of the stakeholders, but you have to respond to the majority because you will never respond to specific needs to everyone because situations are different. Yes. We learned that this was a big storm and we were all in the big storm, but we were all sailing from different boats. Some people were sailing in canoes and other people were sailing in big ships. Mm -hmm. So we needed to learn that the storm was the same, but the boats were different for everyone. We know now that you need to prepare more, both parents and teachers and children for something like this. So in the next phase that we will face, we have learned all these things and we will take that into account to plan our new phases because this will not end right now. We have more challenges in front of us to overcome. Thank you, Marcella, for sharing the key lessons learned. And um, it is all very valuable to all listeners. And I'm sure we all can learn from what you just shared. So thank you for sharing that. Marcella, during the COVID-19 pandemic that we are all still going through, what are the changes you see in the education industry that is taking place? And what are your views that the changes that will take place post COVID-19? Okay, I think that it showed us that we are capable of doing much more of what we were doing. The teachers that thought that they were not ready for something were ready for it. That innovation has to be at the front of education at all times. Uh, not only when you're having difficulties, but you have to innovate all the time. That we need to train people not only in how to teach, but using different tools around us to teach and use them whenever possible. Teacher training is the key, but parents training is the key as well. We need to be creative in how to access and deliver education. We need to commit to focus on what's key in education, on certain concepts and skills more than content. Content is important, but now we know that concepts and skills are key in order to move forward in a situation like ours. Thank you, Marcella. I'd like to um, pick on a bit of what you mentioned earlier on. I think it's uh, very relevant in this discussion here. You mentioned earlier in the very beginning about rethinking how we educate and also about education. It shouldn't be just about academics. It just shouldn't be about results and also about what you learn in terms of the education content and syllables. Well, in your view, what are the skills that needs to be educated to the 
the students or the learners in order for them to survive in these new economies? I do think that we have to develop communication skills, social mm -hmm. skills, motor skills. I mean, different types of skills that children, technological skills. Yeah. All of those skills will enable us to access anything that comes to us. We have to help children to become resilient as well, to be creative and to be innovators as of their own learning as well. These are really key components of, I would say, in what we see this uh, period that we have gone through, where these are the areas that we need to shine and need to actually pull through every day right, in order mm -hmm. to be able to cope and also reinvent ourselves and adapt to the challenges that we are going through to be able to move forward together. So very well said. And I think that's really relevant skills that we need to teach our younger generation and also the students. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marcella, for sharing that. Marcella, are you going through any new normal? If there's any new normal for yourself, can you share that with us? Okay, I, that term, <laughs> it's, it's very popular now, like new normal. Yes. I, I would say that whatever we're leaving right now, it's not normal. But I do think that we have to think of a new culture of behavior until we go back to normality, although normality mm. will never be the same when this finishes. Yeah. I think that we have to learn lots of lessons from these. Humanity cannot continue the same way after these. So I do think that we have to think about how are we going to interact with the world, with the people around us. And the new culture of behavior, it's how am I going to behave to take care of myself and take care of others as well, to protect myself and protect others and to build a new world all together. We are thinking in our school to go through phases until we can all come back together, back to school. We're thinking about having a hybrid model with different phases where we will have only a percentage of children in school every day in order to have the biosecurity measures that have been recommended for us so that the children can come back to school, interact with their peers, with their teachers, but at the same time to be safe and healthy. Thank you, Marcella, for sharing your new normal and really well said and summarized. Now, Marcella, we come to the uh, very important part of the Sky Gems episode uh, in terms of the messaging. So to the listeners of Sky Gems podcast, what would your messages be for the future generations? I think that we cannot take anything for granted. Life can change from one day to the next. We need, need to leave our relationships closely and respectfully with people and with the environment. We need to take care of the people around us and we have to take care of our environment. We need to focus on what is essential and live with what is essential. We need to to read and learn from other cultures and from people that have experienced different moments in their lives and learn from it. We need to develop new skills in children, in adults as well, and focus on developing those skills. And do not be afraid of change and challenges. This pandemic has shown us that we are capable of embracing difficulties, but if we think about others and think about taking care of everyone and supporting each other, not being selfish, but sharing with others, I think that that's key in moments like this. And I do think that maybe human beings, we have become a little bit selfish. And I do think we need to open up, share our knowledge, share our relationships, and think that we're not the only ones in this world. I think that you need to be passionate about what you do and this world will be a better world uh, by making our immediate environment better. Thank you, Marcella. I um, really appreciate the messages that you just shared with uh, the listeners of Sky Jam Podcast and also the future generations. They're all very, very key to our future together and also for the future generations' happiness and success for themselves and also for the community across the globe. 
So thank you, Marcella. Thank you so much once again for sharing. Really so much knowledge, so much experiences, so much wisdom and also vision into what you have just shared with the listeners of SkyGen Podcast. Really appreciate your time and we look forward to uh, seeing you again and hopefully in person soon. And if not over Zoom, and we can definitely share more together. And again, as you say correctly, it's about taking care of people and the environment around us across the globe and also working together to achieve success. Thank you once again, Marcella, for your time. We hope you enjoyed yourself during this SkyGen's podcast episode. We certainly did. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take good care, my friend. Thank you, Alisa. It was a pleasure being here and sharing with you and the people that will hear these and exchanging the different ideas that we all have about this situation and education in general. Thank you, Marcella. You have a wonderful day and evening ahead and hope to see you soon. The same to you. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's episode at Sky Gems Academy Podcast Series 1 on the topic of how COVID-19 transformed the education industry. If you enjoyed today's episode and you love the vision and mission of Sky Gems Academy, can you please help us to convince others to tune in to Sky Gems Academy Podcast 2? Please kindly subscribe to Sky Gems Academy Podcast. Please also kindly leave a quick review and rate Sky Gems Academy Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor.fm, Breaker and various Sky Gems Academy podcast channels. That would mean the world to us, so thank you so much for your support. Visit our website at www.skygemsacademy.com to find out more about our distinguished speakers and about Sky Gems Academy. We appreciate you and your continuous support. Thank you for tuning in to Sky Gems Academy podcast. Hi-fi and peace out.